Hi, this is the tiny movie. This time, I explain the sci-fi thriller movie, Oxygen. Spoiler alert. A woman is regaining consciousness by getting flashbacks of lab rats. Soon after she comes to her senses, she finds herself kept in an eggshell-like coating. She's joking. With everything in her power, she tears up the shell, breathes, and then releases her hands. Getting flashbacks doesn't stop. She removes the serums off her hands and rips up that shell entirely. She just realizes what a closed space she is in. She calls for help with all her power but no use. Suddenly the lights turn on. The patient monitoring system activates, and after a few seconds, the front display also starts to announce a decrease in oxygen level, with the sound of an operator. Slumberously the woman wants to know where she is. The operator starts talking. It says that this is the medical interface liaison operator of the device or Milo. It goes on and says that it's designed to answer all her medical needs. Milo tells the woman that her anxiety level is high and asks her if she wants an injection of sedative. The woman says get me out of here. But Milo declares this is impossible. Milo says the heat level in the processor has consumed oxygen reserves and so declares the suspension of medical cryogenics. When she hears the name cryogenic, she is assured that she's is in the hospital, so she slams the wall and asks for help. It's useless, and the percentage of oxygen is lowered to 34%. Milo informs her that the crash report was sent and it was received. The woman hopes that someone will help her to get rid of the cryo by receiving the crash report. She asks Milo to say who she is. There is no answer. The woman gives some thought, this time she tries command so that the system understands. Patient identity Milo. This time Milo answers. Omicron 267. The woman still experiences mixed flashbacks of memories. She seems to know Milo's language, asks for a display bioform image, and Milo shows her image and again flashbacks. This time she remembers a man kissing her. Oxygen levels decrease to 33. While the woman wants to know the reason for her treatment in the cryo unit, there is no information in the system. Milo informs her that the answer will be prepared in 8 minutes. She begs Milo to open the door, but Milo doesn't answer. The woman order Milo to proceed with unlocking, Milo requests for an administrator password, but the woman doesn't know anything, and this makes her even more frustrated. She asks Milo how did you send the crash report out. Milo answers all data is transmitted via the central data line. Knowing this she asks Milo to call outside by using the central line. This command is executed, then she commands Milo to call the police. Among the 274 police numbers, Milo calls the first number, and the police answer, but they can hardly hear the woman's voice. However, the woman can tell him that she's trapped inside a medical cryogenic pod. The police ask her to tell the hospital name or at least any clue about the place, but she can't recall anything. The only information she can give is the serial number inside the pod. She asks the police if she's buried. The police assure her they'll find her, but the police operator tells her he has to transfer the call to his superior, but the call ends. The woman commands Milo if it is possible for it to search the DNA results for the Omicron 267. The answer is yes. Milo finds a DNA match in the system and shows her various pictures of her. In one of the pictures, she's named Elizabeth Hansen and speaking at a conference. Seeing her name she gets flashbacks. She remembers being called Liz. Suddenly Milo announces an incoming call. The call is made. A man named Captain Moreau from Science and Technology start talking to her. The sound is breaking off. Liz asks the captain not to hang up. The captain assures her that he will keep the call. He asks Liz about her oxygen level. It's 31%. The captain asks her how much time she has. Liz asks Milo the same question. Milo informs her that it will end in another 72 minutes, but with the type of consumption, it is now 43 minutes. The captain wants Liz to remember whoever wanted to hurt her. But she does not remember anything. Liz accuses the captain of hushing up the truth, but the captain says no, it's not so. The captain tells him, according to the manufacturer that the unit was destroyed three years ago. Hearing this, fearfully Liz takes a deep breath. Liz asks Milo for the full medical checks, Milo does not diagnose any disease in Liz. Liz is healthy. Milo reports the 82 years life expectancy for her. Liz is wailing and this raises her blood pressure and the system alarms. The captain tries to calm her down. Liz asks him to open the pod for her, the connection fails, and that makes things worse for Liz. The oxygen level reaches 29%, and Milo reports the probability of survival 0%. Suddenly Milo decides to forcibly inject an anesthetic into her. Liz doesn't want to lose the remaining 40 minutes, so doesn't allow the machine to inject her. She tries to break the machine.
from the speaker inside the unit, the sound of birds singing in nature plays, and this causes Liz to get flashbacks again. Milo reports oxygen level of 23%, and Liz comes around. Liz asks Milo to search for Elizabeth Hansen. Milo finds 1292 scientific articles, 427 references in the press, and 17 social network profiles related to her. One of her related articles is Cryogenics, The Medical Revolution. Liz realizes that she has even won the Nobel Prize as a biologist, she finds out she did it to herself. In another one, she discovers that the man she sees in her memoirs is her husband named Leo Ferguson. Liz asks Milo to find his phone number. Milo manages to find two numbers and calls the first one. But the number is unassigned. Then he calls the second number. A woman answers the phone. Liz says I'm his wife and wants to talk to Leo, but the angry woman on the phone asks her never to call this number again. She calls over and over, but the woman hangs up every time. The oxygen level has reached 21%. Milo wants to forcibly inject anesthetic into her again, but Liz removes the syringe and instead, she tries to use this to destroy the device. Maybe the unit unlocks, but suddenly Milo announces breach attempting, giving her an electric shock, and this causes flashback again. Few minutes, the captain calls her and informs her they have the subpoena and their men are acrysolides. Liz is pleased. The oxygen level is 17%. Liz tells the captain that she recalls memories and pictures, he explains that she's experiencing a psychotic episode caused by isolation, like the prisoners in war. The captain asks her to focus on her reality. Liz tries to create scratches to pain for afraid of losing into memories. Liz asks the captain how long she has been missing. The captain informs her she was active on social media a few days ago, and no one reported her as missing. Liz tells the captain that she has a husband named Leo. Hearing this the captain is surprised and goes silent, but it seems as if he is talking to someone else. Liz thinks the captain is talking to Leo, but the captain says that according to the information they have, Liz has never been married. Liz doesn't believe, asks Milo to search for Dr. Leo Ferguson, but Milo finds no result. Liz wants Milo to search for Elizabeth Hansen. This time, Milo only shows her own photos. There is no sign of Leo. Liz tells the captain that she called a woman, but she recognized Leo. The captain responds, it's your mind playing tricks on you, Liz, Leo isn't real. But Liz doesn't believe it. The captain starts explaining her character, and tells her she was a very good basketball player in college before going to Oxford, but it doesn't ring a bell for her. The oxygen level has reached 15%. The captain tells her to just wait 20 minutes to gain the release code. Liz still seems to hear the captain talking to someone, she no longer wants to talk to the captain, and tells Milo to hang up. Minutes later, Liz asks Milo to replay the last 30 seconds of the call. Liz listens to the part as if the captain is talking to someone again. She asks Milo to turn up the volume. Someone tells the captain to tell Liz that what she sees is illusory. Milo announces an incoming call. She is the woman Liz asks about Leo. The woman tells Liz that she knows she is trapped in the cryo unit and wants her attention because she doesn't have much time. Liz wants to talk to Leo, but the woman admits it is impossible and wants Liz to listen to her. The woman tells her Leo is dead, Liz wants to hang up, but the woman tells her she knows the open code. The code is uppercase NM347 lowercase CDA Liz asks Milo to enter the administrative control and executes the code. Milo is ready to unlock the unit, but the woman begs Liz not doing. Liz doesn't take her seriously. Milo wants permission to unlock. The woman begs her to stop the unlock process or she dies. Liz asks Milo to stop. Liz says she only has 10 seconds to tell the truth. The woman guides her to go to system preferences, find the centrifuge control, and switch the amount to zero. Following that, Milo turns off micro thrusters. Liz floats. Everything floats. The woman on the phone fills her she's 40,389 miles from Earth. Liz can't believe it. She commands Milo to tell her distance from the Earth. Milo says the same thing. The woman wants her to listen to her carefully or in a few minutes, her distance from the Earth made calls impossible. The oxygen level is 13%. The woman reveals that she designed the system and informs Liz that she's on a mission. Mission colonizing a planet around Wolf 10 to 61, 14 light years from Earth. Liz flashback reminds her from the past that she was working in the Ministry of Defense. The woman confirms this. The woman tells her that after two more generations, man will become extinct on Earth. This can't be made public. She adds, the captain was waiting for her to run out of oxygen, and he was trying to plant memories in her mind, so she can't remember everything. 
Liz says, the captain told her she had been missing for three days, is it true? The woman enlightened her, she had been in hypersleep for 12 years. The woman tells Liz, that she will be out of the communication path in a few minutes so asks her to let her find out why she woke up. Milo sees the problem in the 3 to 54 processor, which controls, monitors, and stimulates brain activity. This processor overheated due to loss of oxygen reserves. The woman tells Liz, that with Milo's help, she has to transfer all the processor-related activities to another processor. Milo considers the 694 the non-risk processor, so that if its activity is stopped, Bioform remains safe, so all its activities stop to perform the 3 to 54 activities instead, but Milo considers, doing all activity to be beyond the capacity of this processor. The woman tells Liz it's time to make a difficult choice. Meanwhile, the police are behind the woman's door. She urges Liz to enter hypersleep mode before oxygen level decreases under 2%, but Liz doesn't know how to do that. The woman says just find what triggers your memory. She's arrested. In the last moments, she shouts just find Leo and the call ends. Oxygen has reached 11%. Liz picks up a syringe to use it to damage the pot again, so Milo acted the electric shock so that she can remember something. With each electric shock, she remembers a bit of the past. The wing that Leo was building, his condition in the last moments of his life. Oxygen level has reached 6%. Milo tells Liz that she will only survive 3 minutes after the oxygen is zero. Liz wants to know how long Omicron 267 lives during decompression in outer space. And Milo answers the subject should stay awake between 9 and 11 seconds which great pain will be felt. The oxygen level reaches 5%. Liz can do nothing anymore, she surrenders and wants to unlock the door and it all. Milo is counting down to open the door in space, but with the last flashback, she gives up asks Milo, how many Omicron units are here? Milo says 10,000 units. Liz wants to know how far away the other units are. Milo knows the approximate distance in a radius of 173 feet. Liz wants to see a picture of them. Liz was placed like a cell among thousands of other cells. Milo activates the photochromic UV filtration again to prevent damage to her body. With Milo's help, Liz finds out that among 10,000 units, 9,567 are functional and are in healthy condition, and of these, she is the only one who has woken up. She guesses, Leo in one of them. In finding Leo, Liz asks Milo to look inside the rest of the healthy units. Too many numbers units, the limited time, it's not possible to search all of them, so she wants Milo to show her only male units. Among the flashbacks that she constantly experienced, she remembers the number on a file. She asks Milo to see the bioform of Unit 42. The unit is completely healthy. Milo tells her that Unit 42 is enveloped in the organic cocoon. Milo cannot destroy the cover entirely, but can show her the subject face. He's Leo. Alive. Liz asks Milo to search among the videos of herself. The oxygen level reaches 4%. One of the videos is about a phenomenon called memory transfer. She discovers that Elizabeth Hansen was someone else born in 2003 who passed on her memory to her, and she's someone else. When Liz asks Milo how old she is, she finds out she is only 12 years and 42 days and 17 hours and 56 minutes old. Liz asks Milo to say what is Omicron 267 totally. Milo informs her Omicron is a non-contaminated genetic human reproduction designed to spread the human race on Wolf 10 to 61C. It's uncovered she's only a clone that has never been outside the unit. Liz converts all her feelings for Leo into an audio file and asks Milo to send it to Unit 42. The oxygen level reaches 3%. Milo notifies her that her survival chance is zero and announces that the euthanasia protocol will be active in one minute and starts counting. There are only 10 seconds left. Liz removes the serum tube from which the palliative is supposed to inject into her. Liz disables all unnecessary functions of other processors, reactivates all activities of the 3 to 54 processor, and connects back all IV tubes related to nutrition, hypersleep management, and actives the cerebral activity to hypersleep process begins, but the oxygen level reaches 1%. Milo no longer finds rescue operations possible. 
The oxygen level drops to 0.06, and Liz is ready to die. Suddenly a thought comes to Liz's mind that fools all of Milo's protocols. Liz commands Milo to transfer all the oxygen capacity of the disabled units to her unit. Milo says this takes 14,227 minutes and asks Liz if she wants to place her bioform in hypersleep during the maneuver. That's what she wanted. Crying with pleasure, Liz confirms Milo's request, and she returns to hypersleep mode. It seems that inhaled oxygen is no longer needed in hypersleep mode but anyway during anesthesia, Milo tells her about the conditions of the new planet. Its mass is about four times that of Earth. Has an orbital cycle of 18 days. After 34 years they will reach the planet, and on arrival, the hive sewing vessel will break up to free the 9,568 units, and that will enter the atmosphere of Wolf 10 to 61C, thanks to their individual helix-shaped device by the original Leo. At the end of the movie, Liz and Leo are both together on the new planet, and the movie ends. Subscribe for watching videos like this, turn on notifications, and thank you for watching.